In this problem, we have a uniform charge distribution shaped like a cylinder with the radius big R here, with a uniform charge density as well, marked by this rho variable here. Our goal in this problem is to derive a formula that can be used to find the electric field at any point, at any radius, within this cylinder of charge. So at any smaller radius, small r, lowercase r, where small r is less than big R, we want to have a formula that can tell us what the electric charge is at that radius within the cylinder. And since we're talking about electric charge that is static, or not necessarily moving, we can that usually is an indicator that we can solve this using Gauss's law, which is the, the most fundamental law that we have when it comes to static electricity. And in its most basic and simplistic form, and it tells us that the electric flux that passes through a closed surface is equal to the charge enclosed by that surface divided by epsilon naught, the permittivity constant. Though when we're specifically trying to relate this to the electric field specifically, it's common for this electric flux term here to be written as the electric field times the surface area which is what that is usually equal to, like this. And the reason why this relates to our situation here, to our diagram, is because since we're being asked to analyze uh, the electric field at some point within a larger area of electric charge, we can think of this as a Gauss's Law problem, where this small radius we have here is basically a small Gaussian surface, a small closed surface within the section of charge and we're trying to analyze the field at that point and we can do so by looking at the electric charge within that field or within that smaller cylinder that smaller gaussian surface so if you want you could kind of extend the little surface area or the little radius that we're given here in the diagram to show that we could look at this as another gaussian surface of some radius small r within the field of charge so if we're trying to find information about the electric field within this Gaussian surface, let's try rewriting Gauss's law to fit in more with this situation. A good place to start might be to brush up on your geometry knowledge and remember that the volume of a cylinder is equal to pi times the radius squared times the length of the cylinder. So pi r squared times and then I'm using L to represent the length of the cylinder, of the Gaussian coat closed cylinder that we've set up here. And this is useful because in the actual problem description itself, it doesn't mention, it doesn't like give us the enclosed charge as a variable that we have to work with here. It only mentions the charge density. So we can rewrite the total enclosed charge in terms of the density by taking the density and multiplying it by the volume because that's how you can get, that's how density and volume relate to one another. So we can say that the charge, that Q, the charge enclosed within the Gaussian surface, is equal to the charge density multiplied by the volume of the cylinder. So we can replace the Q in this formula with rho, the charge density, times pi r squared L. Also notice that the A, the surface area in our Gauss's Law formula, that refers to the area over which the electric field passes through the, Gauss, the, the Gaussian surface. In our case, that's just going to be the surface area of a cylinder, because that's the type of Gauss's, Gaussian surface that we've set up, a cylinder. It's worth noting, though, that because our situation is cylinder-shaped, all the electric fields kind of is kind of going to be pointing outwards if the charge is positive or inwards if the charge is negative but either way it's going uh, the electric field the direction of the field is going to be perpendicular to the cylinder itself that means that there is is not going to be any flux that passes through the sideways caps of the cylinder that's not going to happen so we can ignore the cylinder caps and only focus on the surface area around the length of the cylinder itself. And that's just going to be the circumference of a circle multiplied by the length of the cylinder. 
So in other words, A, the, the surface area that the field passes through, is going to be equal to 2 pi r times L, where L is still the length of our cylinder here. And now we're ready to start making some simplifications in our formula here. Notice that we've got an L on the numerator of both sides, so we can remove that, which is good anyway, because the problem didn't actually reference an L variable. We just came up with that to help us look at the problem. This pi's will cancel out. This one r will cancel out with one of the r squared, so that we're only left with one r in the numerator. And then, since our ultimate goal from the beginning was to get a formula for the electric field at the radius small r, we just need to isolate this e variable. And we can do that by dividing both sides of this equation by 2. And now, the final formula that we end up with says that the electric field that we're looking at at that radial distance is equal to the charge density times the radial distance divided by 2 times the permittivity constant. And we find that this is correct. So if the problem gives you any variables or any numbers, you can plug those in and that will tell you the electric field at that point.